Welcome to BookWrite. This is a program I used to use when I used Photoshop for my book layout. So I just want to give you an overview and show you how it works. It's a pretty cool publication software. It is actually quite similar to programs like InDesign and things like that. It doesn't have quite as many features, but it works really well for most users. So I'm just going to go and show you once you open BookWrite and you can download this from Blurb's website, you can pick any of these options here. You'll notice there's some cool like little trade books and stuff that you can have fun with. I'm going to go ahead and pick the standard landscape. That's what I usually use for my books. I'm going to go ahead and hit start new book and you start by giving it a name. So I'm going to call it family album. And it's saving it on my hard drive under a folder called blurb. So it does actually make that folder for you. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up. Oops. So here's some things to start. You can download download book templates. Um, actually, why don't I go ahead and do that? Because most of you are going to want to do that. So go ahead. These are starter templates. So you have a cookbook, you have a family book. I'm going to go ahead and pick family and hit download template. So once again, you can see there's a lot of different options here. This just gives you a starting point. I'm just going to open that up real quick. I think this will automatically load. Oh, there we go. So double click on that from your downloads folder and that will load in here. Just quick, get that in your view. Okay, so here's a template. You can see how there's instructions on here. Um, obviously you're supposed to delete these so you can read this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete. Oops, hit this little trash can there and remove that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that as well. So this is your very first page right here. You can see how it says Family Book 2015. It generated that just because that's what you titled your book. I'm going to go ahead and hit the trash can and you can type in your own text. So you can create any title you want and hit this little guy here. You can pick whatever font you want. Let's pick actually. So just so you know, if you see I have all these extra fonts on my computer, that is because I am a graphic designer. So I have a kind of obsessive amount of fonts. So we'll go ahead. I'm just going to stick with Actually, why not? Why don't we do American Typewriter? And then notice here you can pick like 36. Whoops. Hello. You can hit 36 point font so you can make the size bigger. You can double click on this and put different colors in. You can make it centered. You can make play with these different alignment things here. So here is my title for my book. And I just want to show you some things you can do with this. These are actually movable little individual objects. So for example, you can say here is my title. And then you could drag in up here, oops, I'm sorry, over here, this is what I meant to do. Do you see how you can draw? So you can add a text box, meaning draw in or draw in a photo box. I'm going to go in and draw in a photo box. So now I have this photo image here, so I can drag a photo. I'm going to go ahead and add some photos. I'm going to go to my documents folder and go to my family albums. And I had showed you this in the article about how I store things. So here's like January through April, for example. So I can, let's pick, let's do beer stat. Let's just pick beer stat. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pick all of these. Just select them all and hit open. And what it's going to do is actually import these photos for you to use within your album. So when I'm working on a book, I tend to import a chunk at a time. So pardon me while this imports. Pardon my little cell phone bing. That was my brother Dan. And I'm gonna turn that off. All right, so still waiting for these to import. Okay, and now you can drag one of these images in here. So you can drag it in, you can move it around. If you wanna change the size of this box, you can. And you can also, if you click on this, you can see how you can zoom in and out. So this is, what I like about Blurb is you can really have a lot of control over where all the pieces go, and that's why I like it. So now we can go ahead and click through the book. What this means when you do a template is, let me just zoom out a little bit, you can see how it just automatically puts some things in here. So an image box here, a text box here, 
this first page has this group of text boxes and this these groups of text boxes down here. So you can see how the template just has these sections of pages. So that's what's kind of nice about this. By the way, you can see there's a little check here. That means that you've already used that image. So that's kind of nice. It helps you keep track of stuff. By the way, really quick, Right here, do you see this little thing here about these safe areas up at the top? This bleed and trim line, when you make put something at the printer, and this is described here, but the printer prints things just slightly larger than the page size and then trims. So what this is saying is anything within this red check is going to get cut off. Anything that's within this purpley area, you shouldn't have any kind of text or anything important because it could possibly get lost. So know that that's what that is. Okay, so what I can do now is I can just start dropping images in from my bin up here. Now I can go to the next page and start dragging these images here. So you can see how easy it is, especially when you're starting from a template, to just go through and work with your images and place them in sections. Once again, if you don't like one of the template pages, you can always move it around. Whoops this here and you can draw more image boxes so I could put a box here you could put a box here and do some things like that I want to show you some other things you can do if you have some digital scrapbooking elements let's say for example you have this little journal strip you can add this to your photo album here and you can actually drag your elements. Then you can even drag a text box on top of this. And here is my note on my journal tag. So you can see how you can use this. And the, obviously this font's a little small, but well, maybe not. It's because I'm zoomed out quite, or zoomed out a bit. So, but you can see how you can use your digital scrapbooking elements in here. I'm gonna show you another way of doing this. I'm gonna take another photo, let's say you want to use a paper background, you can actually drag an image like this. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a photo. So I'm going to go back to my digital scrapbooking files and I'm going to go to papers and I'm just going to pick a paper. So maybe this one. I'm just, just because that was nearby. And I can put this in here. I'm going to right click on this and I can go to move to back and you can see how this goes in the back here. Now these images I need to move to the front. Because they were not going, they didn't want to go behind that. So you might have to play with this. To be honest, the easiest thing to do is to start with a blank page. And then if you put this background image in first, then that will automatically be in the background. And then when you put the images on top of it, those images will be on top. If I hide this, you can see what this looks like right now. So you can see how I have my digital scrapbooking paper with my photo images on here. Real quick, let me show you what I mean by if you have a blank page. So let's say this was my page again, and I'll do this once again. I'm gonna add a photo. Add a photo, clicked on the wrong button. Once again, go back to my desktop, to my digital scrapbooking. Go to my papers, and I can pick a new paper, and I can drag this here. What will happen is now, if I go and make a new draw, a new photo box, this photo box will automatically get put on top of this paper. So that's what I mean by if you're starting from a new page, it makes it easier. Next thing I'm going to show you is if you have a blank page like this, Oops, sorry. If you have a blank page like this, now technically this isn't blank because it has an image on top of it, but let's say you made a page in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how I used to do this. So I'm going to go to Photo Books, and I have these photo pages that I created. Oops, I'm sorry. I need to add, click Add Photo. I clicked the wrong button. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my documents and go to my photo books. Here's my Italy photo album I made. So here I can pick one of these pages. So here's this page four. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open. 
and I can drag this into here. So you can make a page in Photoshop, you can make all of your pages in Photoshop, and then place them into this Blurb software. One thing I've seen some people do is they just make the graphics section and then they add the text in Blurb. That sometimes works well. It's kind of a personal preference. But what I used to do before I started using InDesign is that I would go ahead and just make each individual page in Photoshop and then save it as a JPEG because it does need to be in JPEG to be in this. If you want to make the page in Photoshop, you can format it in Photoshop, save it as a JPEG, or you can actually do some digital scrapbooking in a sense by using this Blurb program. Okay, now that you've seen a few things about the digital scrapbooking, I want to show you a couple other important things, which includes adding and deleting pages. So let's say you just finished this page here, this page nine, and you want to add a page. If you go up here, you can see this plus, add a page or add two pages, add one pages, add ten pages, etc. You can add at the beginning of the book, at the end of the book, or after the page. I'm going to say after the page and hit add pages. So you can see how it added this page here and bumped these along. This is really helpful if, for example, you finish your family album and realize you forgot your child's first birthday party. So I have done that before. So it's nice to be able to just add those pages as you go. The other thing I want to show you is you'll notice when you have a new page, it just is a blank page. So you have to decide what kind of layout you want. You can use these little draw tools to make photo and text containers, or you can pick from the layouts that you see all up here. You can see I have all layouts. I can pick photo layouts. I can pick text layouts. So there's a few different options there. I'll pick photo layouts. So here's some. Here's a pretty standard one where you have a photo that fills the page. Or you can do, like I said, a variety of these. So for example, this one that has three different image boxes. Once again, you can use this as a starting point and edit these existing boxes so you can move them around you're not stuck with whatever you make i should also point out and this is very much like publishing software but maybe you've made a page template like this and you want to save the layout you can click right up here you can pick save layout so you can save and reuse the same layout that you used before so it's just a nice option that's in here if you don't like a page, just like add, you can hit this little trash can and you can delete a page so it moves them around. I'm going to actually delete one more because you'll notice now my Rome page is on the, the correct layout because this was meant to be a left facing page. So do be careful with that if you add or remove pages. A lot of times you need to add two or it might throw off how you line things up. The last thing you need to do is make a cover. I always do the cover last. The reason for this is that this spine here will change sizes based on how many pages you have. You'll notice that you have different options for the type of cover you want to use. I prefer this hardcover image wrap because I found the one with the dust jacket just gets beat up a little more. So I, that's why I like the image wrap. I printed both, but I like that one. I will also tell you I like this Pro Pearl photo paper. It is expensive, but it's really thick paper paper that almost has a laminated feel to it. Not in a bad way, not in a plasticky way, but it has just, it has kind of a durable coating that's good for people with small children who like to destroy things. Once again, just make sure you pick a cover template first, and now you can go ahead and start adding things. So from this little binding here, let's say you want to say family album 2015. I can do that, and then I'm going to pick a bigger font and I don't know we'll do American typewriter again why not yeah I don't like that anyways you can play with the fonts on here make sure when you do your spine that you do make a nice big bold font that it's easy to read I would recommend putting the year. I've made that mistake before. It's just nice when you're looking back at your albums to be able to see a year or date of some sort. The other thing you want to do on the spine is do make sure you pick a really easy to see font. I accidentally used a cursive font one and while it looked really pretty, it's hard to read when it's sitting on my shelf. So I've got my spine here and I could have done that later, but that's how you do that. Now you need to put some images on here. A lot of times what I do is I actually format the cover in Photoshop. I'll, I'll show you this really quick. I'll go ahead to Photos and add a photo. And if you look on this Italy book I made for my mom, here's the back cover and the front cover. So I can hit Open 
and I can drag this into here. So you can see how I formatted this to fit this page. You'll see this has a little exclamation point. It says low image resolution. I had made this a slightly different size than what the layout of this book is. It's probably only off by a couple pixels, but that's why it's on there. So normally, just be careful about the size you use. You can look at the website to get specifications for how big the actual cover is. This is an eight by 10 book. The cover is just a little bit bigger than that, but you can see how you can just quickly make a cover in Photoshop, save it as a JPEG and drag it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add my next photo, which is my back. Put that in there. And I can drag this here. So you can see how this is the actual full resolution image size. I think that I printed this book a little bit. I used a slightly smaller format when I made this book, so that's why it's a little grumpy at me. So just loading my cover. Come on. Okay, so you can see how I have these images here. I need to zoom in a little because it's kind of coming off the page. But you can see how I can make this front and back cover, and then from there, add things. Now for this family album for On the Spine, what I actually did is I actually created a color. Let me quick hit this. So see how you can pick a color for your spine? I actually, in Photoshop, used the color picker to pick the color of that paper. I wonder if you can use it on here. No, you can't. So you can actually in Photoshop get these color codes from Photoshop and you can match the spine to whatever color you picked there. Let me just try a slightly more brown tone. All right, so this isn't perfect, but you can see how in Photoshop, if I had that color code number, it'd be much easier. The other thing you can actually do as well is you can add a photo box and I could drag a digital paper into this little thing here. So if you had a paper that you had used on your for your digital scrapbooking, you can see how I can drag that same pa same paper. Excuse me. You can see how I can drag that same digital paper into here. I'm gonna just quick grab this little box and right click on it and say move to back. So you can see how now that says family album. And then I use that paper in the background. And then over here, I've got my front and my back covers on here. So once again, you can format these in Photoshop. I could have also built these on Blurb itself very easily. This is just text with these are digital scrapbooking papers. So you can do it either way. I tend to do it in Photoshop since I can play with things a little more, but that's how you can build a cover. This is how you can do your, control your spine. And then when you're ready to print, you hit this little upload button. Do make sure that you preview your book well. I have the first few books I printed, I didn't have someone edit them and I've caught a number of mistakes. So do just be careful about that. But hopefully this was helpful. Once again, you've got your cover, you've got your pages, save the cover for last. You can either build just like the pages, you can build this in Photoshop, or you can build it in Blurb itself. And on my website, I'll list, I can't remember the pixel dimensions here, but I know on the Blurb website somewhere, it actually gives you a size, a template size to make these cover designs. Enjoy making your family albums.